Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and this is my husband Drew. And on this channel, we talk about life and relationships after leaving the church and do some commentary on the goings on in evangelical Christianity. Clearly today we are doing something a little bit different for this channel. I thought that we could do Drew's makeup in a God-honoring way, a la Girl Defined. I have to say, this one's been requested multiple times. Mm -hmm. This was not our idea. Like, 10 different commenters have had this idea. <laughs> yeah. So our goal with this makeup look is to do something that enhances your natural God-given beauty. Okay. That's... That's what Girl Defined says God honoring makeup is. Okay. And also just as a disclaimer, their original video has actually been deleted. So I don't think that they hold to any of the ideas that they expressed in that video any longer. Okay. So it's just I, a meme I'm, at this point. Yeah. This will be kind of interesting and a bit of a challenge for me because I'm not exactly like super good at makeup. I feel like I'm okay doing my own makeup, but I haven't done makeup on other people a whole lot. And I've never done makeup on you before. I'm just wondering so. <laughs> what you're going to do about my facial hair. Um, we're just gonna put makeup over it and see what <laughs> happens. I thought while I'm doing Drew's makeup, we will talk about our experiences with purity culture and what we were and weren't allowed to wear and what kind of makeup I could do uh, growing up. And then also talk about music that we both like because we've gotten a lot of comments asking us about our music yeah. interests because we have this whole record wall. Yeah. So people are kind of curious about that. So we'll talk about that today. Before we transform Drew into a true God honoring man, allow me a brief moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Did you know that at this very moment, data brokers might be selling your personal information to scammers, spammers, or anyone else who may want to target you? You know what's worse? Companies you trust may be putting you at risk. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T revealed that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, you don't have to worry because Aura takes care of all of that and more. Aura is an online security service that not only identifies which brokers are selling your private information, but also automatically submits opt-out requests on your behalf to remove your info from these systems. Using Aura's service, I actually discovered that 17 data brokers were selling my information. This knowledge definitely made me very uncomfy, but I'm relieved to know that Aura has already requested to remove my name from these online databases. This will help me reduce the number of pesky spam emails I receive and also protects me from hackers who could use my private info to access things like my social media or bank accounts. If you thought Aura was great already, your sign up also includes services like antivirus software, password management, VPN, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and so much more. Actually, as soon as I finished creating my Aura account, I was immediately notified that one of my passwords was compromised in a leak, and I was able to get that quickly resolved. They really are the complete online security service, and I don't know about you, but I much prefer having all of this in one convenient location rather than having multiple apps. If you're interested in checking out Aura, and I highly suggest that you do, you can use my link aura.com slash antibot and receive a two week free trial. This link will also be down in the description. Thank you, Aura. Now back to the video. All right, so you ready? Okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> We're gonna start out with some primer. I just use this spray primer because I, I know a lot of people like to use like actual, like, what do you call it? Like, like a gel type of thing. Huh, okay. But I don't like to do that because I feel like it makes it feel like really cakey mm. and it gives me bad sensory. So <laughs> we're gonna start out with this. <laughs> How do you feel so far? Uh, moist. <laughs> I should say dewy. People are people are triggered by the other word. Moist yeah. is not not okay. Dewy is the right word here. She went and got something to match my skin tone today, but I think that she underestimated the amount of time I've spent in the sun over the last couple of months. And uh, I am not trying to look like a geisha. <laughs> That's not that. It's <laughs> not that bad. So I think she's mixing some together. I'm mixing together. two foundations. Because my color is definitely way too dark for you. So I tried to get something that was lighter, but then I went a little too far. Mm. 
So I'm going to mix these up and see what see what happens. I have great confidence in the fact that this is completely experimental and <laughs> something you've never done before. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. So why don't you start us off talking about your, your purity culture experiences? Uh, I mean, for me, there definitely was... There were a lot of lessons about being modest even as a man, sure. But honestly... If you're a man growing up in even like fundamentalist Christianity, the main way that you encounter purity culture is just seeing the way that women around you are are yeah. treated and taught. And uh, so I remember one time when my sister got in trouble at church, not by like people we were friends with or anything like that, like not like normal people we associated with, but some of the some of the certain people at church, those people. Uh, they were upset that my sister was wearing like open toed shoes or sandals or something like that at church. And I don't know how she was being a temptress by showing her toes at church. Apparently somebody knew something particular about their husband is what I'm, what I'm guessing. And she saw that oh, as particular. That's yeah. Creepy. Yeah. So those are the kinds of experiences that, that I really had. I know that I wasn't supposed to wear cut off jeans or anything cuffed at any point because that was too gay. And now, as you guys see, I always roll things up. I always cuff things because that fits my body better. And uh, just being kind of chastised for doing that when I was a teenager is probably the main thing that I experienced personally, like indirectly. Now, what about you? You've shared some stories already on the on the channel, but I'm sure yeah. people would like to hear them again. Um, I think for me growing up, I never, sorry, I, I can't like do this and talk at the same time, actually, I realized. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I didn't have a lot of restrictions placed on me when it came to like what I had to wear from my family. Um, we were pretty open-minded when it came to that, obviously. They had certain, they don't want me to be too exposed, but I wore a lot of stuff that in the missionary community that I was in would have been considered kind of iffy by like most people. I didn't wear that stuff around that community, but I would like if we went on vacation uh, with my family, I would wear like bikinis and stuff and mm -hmm. like that wasn't a big deal. But I think purity culture and modesty culture I felt the effects of that a lot in like my missionary community. Yeah. You guys know I grew up as an MK and the school I went to was an international Christian school and most of the students that went there were other missionary kids and we had a lot of <laughs> things that we weren't allowed to wear. When we went on class trips, if it happened to be to somewhere where there's like a beach or like we were going to be swimming or something, the girls had to wear pants or shorts like gym like basketball shorts yeah that like went down to our knees and then yeah. we had to wear like t-shirts over our bathing suits yeah. which you know that's not fun to wear while you're swimming that's what the at girls all. at my church had to do too oh really yeah and the guys also had to wear shorts oh. or i mean not shorts uh shirts i mean also shorts but shorts and shirts so i'm gonna try to tell a story from your uh teenage years and you from can, mine yeah and you can tell me if i've gotten it right so okay been paying attention um so you are in some kind of like multi-purpose room as a teenager i'm not sure like what grade you were in but i mean it was like it was high school and you you were sitting in a particular way i want to say that you were sitting you're like kind of almost laying on your back with your feet up in the air a bit with or like yeah. with your legs up in the air uh -huh. and uh i don't know i think you were moving around different different ways but at some point you moved in such a way that it uh inspired one lady from the mission community to come over to you and say hey taylor you shouldn't do that position it's very provocative to the boys here because it looks like a sex position yeah <laughs> did, did i did i get no, that story yeah, right no, yeah that's that's you know i was just in the like multi-purpose room i was just laying down on my back and like had my feet up I don't even know exactly, but it was like I had my feet up in some type of way. And she said, told me that I shouldn't be sitting like that because it's too much like a sex position. And I'm just like, I was, you know, 
14, 15 maybe at that time. I didn't really know exactly all the different sex positions. So I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I think that what, what's the what's the phrase that people use? It's like every accusation is an admission. Are you, yeah. are you taking off my eyebrows or are we erasing and <laughs> penciling in my eyebrows? I know well, you can still see your eyebrows, but I have to. Otherwise, it's going to I need to like blend it into okay. your hair and whatnot. Oh, God, it's going to get in my hair, too. <laughs> Like, I do wear a little bit of makeup when I'm filming normally because I have a skin condition that basically the blood vessels on my nose are, like, very exposed. Uh, but, I mean, oh, my God. Holy shit. <laughs> this is, like, frightening looking. I, my... Hey, trust the process. Okay, I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is very much trust, trust the process kind of situation. My eyes look so red in contrast. Like, I might as well have been stoned for this. I look like that right now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a ghost. <laughs> yeah, that's what people have told me my whole life. You look like a little Victorian boy. That's also what people have been telling me my whole life. My governess drowned me in the bath. <laughs> that's why I haunt these premises. <laughs> Tried to not like do too much, but... But you did too much? <laughs> it, it, it's, I don't think it's actually too much. I think it's that I'm not used to seeing you with foundation on that's... and it looks crazy <laughs> <laughs> i'm just waiting for uh some like christian apologists to screen cap this and use it in their thumbnails or actually you know what muslim apologists like the dawa guys they love to get unflattering pictures of their opponents and put them in their thumbnails like the, the oh, no. i think one of the most popular response videos to me ever is me like with my mouth like wide open going like this and they like erased my teeth and so I look like I left my dentures at home that day. And uh, yeah, this is definitely going to give them some more fuel. Well, so. I feel like this whole video is just giving the Christian and Muslim apologists material to work with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Open your, or like keep your eyes closed, but like don't squint them so much. So on to the music bit. I figured we could talk about how we actually met through music in a way. Okay, yeah. Taylor was a part of the praise band or one of the many bands at our school, like in college. And you played what? Were you lead guitar? Were you rhythm? Um, either or? I, yeah, I think it depended. Uh, uh, yeah, either or. But you yeah. Close your eyes. But as you guys can see directly behind me, Taylor had this fantastic gold top Les Paul. And, uh, yeah, well, she was playing one day in chapel, which we were mandated to go to three times a week, at least. Yeah. Uh, I saw her and her band playing up there, and my friend sitting next to me and nudges me and is like, like, hey, check out that, that guitar, check out that girl. And I was like, yeah, man, that guitar is awesome. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I really said. I was, I don't know. I, I've never been a, a person that was really like purposely looking to get with anybody is more like I'll get with somebody if I find them attractive and I already know them. Um, and, you know, I was like, I was 18 anyway. So it's not like I needed to be super focused on yeah. that. Plenty Look of, up. I had plenty of time. It's not like we were Mormon. So we didn't need to get <laughs> married at 19 years old. Even though we almost did. We effectively got, we got married. We just got married at 21. Yeah, 21. <laughs> I'm on my way to Kristen and Bethany right now. <laughs> so my friend is like, no, you idiot. It's like the girl. Look at the girl that I'm, that's holding the guitar. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, isn't she hot? And I'm like. Close your eyes. I'm like, I mean, yeah, but I like, I don't know her. Which, like, you know, since then I've realized that, like, I just am the type of person who is just not, like, super attracted to someone until I know them. That's just not yeah. really how it works for me, and I didn't realize that was a thing uh, back then. But, yeah, he says, like, you should try talking to her. And I was basically like... Look up. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll I'll talk to her. And, uh, I mean, I I don't know. My friends were mostly girls my whole life so like talking to girls yeah, I, like we pretty normal. went to a like a stem school with mostly mostly guys and so it was just really normal for like the freshmen to be 
really inexperienced and really terrified with girls. And for me, it was like, okay, you're, you're asking me to go make a new friend. So effectively, like, that's what I did. I, yeah. I don't know. I saw, I don't remember. Did, did I see you walking somewhere? Where did I initially talk to you? Was it in chapel, like, I on feel, the way out? I feel like it was. No, no, no. The first time we met was at a mutual friend's birthday party. Wasn't That's that the true. first time we actually met? Yeah, we did We did meet there, I think, before this happened, Yeah, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess I was like, oh, yeah, I know who she is, but we hadn't, like, talked. We but just... I remember you, like, approached me in chapel, and I don't remember exactly what you said to me. I, or maybe you just said that you liked my guitar? I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think I just started talking about your guitar and about music stuff and... Like, we just kind of got to talking, and I was, I think I ended up saying, how do you, um, how do you rein it in when you're playing in chapel? Because I feel like there's kind of a taboo against getting more into it when you're playing. And I was like, my experience is basically playing in punk bands. Like, I play guitar in punk bands. I also play bass in, like, punk bands. And, you know, usually the, the vibe is a lot more animated than in chapel. Like, so do you you like have to purposely hold it in (laughs) like not to distract or disrupt or whatever and we talked about that a little bit and I think I basically just kept talking to you when we we sat near ish to each other in chapel like one like an aisle apart I think yeah and so so. it was really easy for us to bump into each other on our way out of chapel and so I just kept talking to you on the way out of chapel and eventually uh i think we just started hanging out and like watch i think we started watching the walking dead a lot yeah together. that was like the first thing that we bonded over was the walking dead yeah which was actually popular and good at that <laughs> time sorry i just never see you with makeup on so it's like you're so strange okay we're getting a little color here that's probably good and we hung out as friends for a few months and it wasn't like a romantic thing it was just us hanging out started going on walks together sometimes and uh just kind of enjoyed each other's relaxed vibe you were an mk and i was the first in several generations of men in my family not to be a missionary yeah so like we we're both from missionary families and so i i just kind of inherently understood what your experience was to a certain extent and i think that you appreciated that like this completely american boy could understand the yeah what being a what being an mk was well, like and i feel like you also asked a lot of questions about like what my experience was like mm. if you didn't already know something like you already kind of understood the whole missionary kid thing yeah but then the things that you didn't know you would ask questions and a lot of people like wouldn't really ask questions about it because they didn't even like know what to ask yeah so that even was kind of frustrating to like talk about my experience growing up with people it was really hard for me to relate to other people because they like just did not get it like, even in christian evangelical christian spheres you'd be surprised how little people really know about the the mission community and especially just about living anywhere besides for america yeah you know like yeah. there's so, evangelical culture can be so thoroughly saturated with american exceptionalism that even like the the mk people even the the missionaries that live overseas it's kind of like oh that's eh. we sub- we send you money but it's weird not to live in america because america's the <laughs> best yeah i'm not sure what's particularly god honoring about this yet I guess it is complimenting my natural beauty in a way. Can you guys see Piggy back there? If he... There you go. You can see his tongue a little bit when he licks. Eventually, uh, I definitely caught feelings. And I was... That was right before Christmas break. Uh, So this was like first... This was first semester of college for us. uh, that, That this all happened. Um... But so, yeah, it was like the last day before Christmas break, I realized that I had finally like caught feelings for you and we were talking and I said a bunch of just stupid, funny things, not trying to have like a real conversation about liking you or something over 
text while you were in Indonesia and I was in Texas. But when we got back to school the next semester, we hung out for like another month. And I think we walked to the cafeteria every day together. I think we sat together most of the time at dinner and we went on walks together most days. So it was just, yeah, it was very, very clear to everyone we knew that we were kind of pairing off. And yeah. eventually on uh, January 27th, 2013, I asked you to be my girlfriend. And we had basically been on like dates already, but it had just been like as, as, friends. as friends. And you said yes and then ring by spring and 2.5 kids and starting a ministry together and all of the no we didn't do any of that the rest of that <laughs> stuff we did get married at 21 but uh that's that is our meeting story and it all started with the guitar you can see over my shoulder there. <laughs> and while i have only one eyebrow filled in how about you say what kind of things you were into actually playing on guitar at the time besides for worship music oh it's kind of difficult because at the time, the majority of the stuff that I was playing was worship music. Um, I like to play stuff from the band Heart. Like yeah. I know a lot of like solos and intros from that band. Yeah. Well, they have really <laughs> nice guitar pieces. Yeah. So. I can't remember. What did you think of the fact that I was into playing punk stuff and I even had a little hardcore project with me and some guys from the dorm that was called the Skid Marks. <laughs> I thought that that was actually really, really cool. Okay. Um, I wasn't into or like super familiar with punk or like hardcore music. At the time, my music taste was symphonic metal. I was really into symphonic metal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but... So I think I was kind of like a little bit more open-minded to that kind of music maybe than other people yeah. would be. But yeah, I thought it was really cool. Yeah, if anybody's wondering, I'm not sure how much your fan base is super into classic like punk and hardcore, but The Skid Marks was a project inspired by three albums. One, obviously, Black Flag's Nervous Breakdown EP, probably still my favorite album or EP of all time i love how gross and raw it is uh and then the circle jerks first album and then also um i think it's called like the first four eps just like a compilation of eps by the band off which was led by my favorite black flag vocalist keith morris and yeah that was big at the time i'm not really sure how big off is now something might have gotten cut off there because the camera stopped but okay uh anyway I had a little project with a couple of my friends in the dorm uh, senior year, and I was lead vocals. Uh, my friends were the bassist and drummer. The drummer was really good. And you were lead guitar. I played rhythm. You played lead guitar. And it was, I don't know. I, my friends and I basically just all, we just listened to 90s alternative rock constantly. I guess late 80s stuff too. So it was basically like uh, the Pixies, Radiohead, Weezer, Closure. and I don't know. that Those those were the big three that we were always like talking about and listening to. And so I just wrote a few songs that were kind of like that, kind of inspired by that. Maybe a little bit more bluesy at times than that. And uh, we would go to this very small chapel building because the green room had gotten wise to me. <laughs> and we would play in this very small chapel building where they were often having little worship services and we would have to like wait till they were done. That was the main thing that you and I played together on. We played together sometimes for fun, but I think that was the main thing that we that we did together, right? Yeah. I wrote a song about Richard Feynman, my favorite, one of my favorite, like, scientists ever. He was a physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project when he was young, and then later he won a Nobel Prize for theoretical physics in, like, 1962, 1963. I'm moving too much. 
<laughs> no, it's just so like you're not doing anything wrong. It's so weird doing this on you. Also, you're like eyes. You like move your eyes a lot. When I'm <laughs> Do you think it would be God honoring if I gave you a little wing? You think that? You think that? I think we get our wings after in the next life. <laughs> Only in heaven do we receive our wings. <laughs> okay, so we're going to skip that? Yeah. Oh, you look so baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our group chat tells me <laughs> on a regular basis, not going to lie. <laughs> so what is our music taste these days? Because for me, I've always like I've always been very much into symphonic metal, for yeah. sure, and folk metal. But the last couple of years, I've been getting into some harder stuff like grindcore and death metal. Uh, we have two different death, like the band Death records up there. And of course, Ghost, my favorite band mm-hmm. ever. And like Cradle of Filth and that kind of thing. Cattle Decap is one of my favorites right now. Yeah. I'm really into Necro Goblicon right now. <laughs> So I, I'm my stuff is a little bit more extreme, I think, than yours in yeah. some ways. Uh, the artists that I listen to the most have got to be. I'll try to put these in order. Okay, uh, let's look straight ahead. Descending order: Fela Kuti, Nigerian Afrobeat artist; uh, MF Doom. If you are a 30 year old white man, you probably know or listen to MF Doom. Uh, and then. The Temptations, funny enough, I this is one of the things I listened to when I was growing up. Like, you know, my parents didn't really see music that old as being a bad influence. So we listened to The Temptations on the way to school a lot. So that, and then probably Nas after that. Although, I, I'm not going to lie, I have been tuning in to the Kendrick Drake thing that's going on right now, but only on the Kendrick side because I don't, know or care about drake i just want new kendrick stuff that's pretty much, <laughs> pretty much it oh i can like feel the this is what you experience all the time i can feel the weight of this mascara on my eyelashes really they're already long that's and luxurious so enough i don't know i guess i'm just used to it Ooh. are you okay yeah so here's an example of what i listen to this is what it sounds like this is what taylor listens to <laughs> I am feeling very godly. Mm. Oh, this this lipstick might be a little dark for a god fearing woman. Yeah, I mean, you're. I'm assuming you didn't buy this for this, right? No, <laughs> no, none of your none of your makeup is is god honoring. So here's another example of what I listen to. What is that? Uh, Skincock. And here's the final example of what Taylor listens to. <laughs> I feel like we're not even gonna get copyright claimed on that because how many like, how many songs are? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna spray. All right. What do you think? <laughs> I am Bethany Beeling. I mean, I feel like it actually looks good. It's just I don't ever see you with makeup on, so it's just like it's taken me aback. I'm gonna have to take a picture to send it to the group chat. <laughs> How much you want to bet that I was actually going to use the, the term "baby girl"? Yeah, probably. <laughs> hey guys, Taylor just did my makeup in a god honoring <laughs> way. Uh, I mean, I am, I am serving. I have to say. You're so baby girl. But I don't know how God honoring this is given that I am a boy. <laughs> okay, guys, so let us know if this is God honoring enough or not. Like, would Girl um, Define like. Yeah, I actually don't think that this is God honoring enough. There's really? a few adjustments I want to make. Just hold on one second. Okay. Six and a half hours later. Okay, I think that looks good. What do you guys think? Oh my god! <laughs> we didn't say which god. <laughs> <laughs> Time for us to go get uh, an abortion and dress as the opposite gender so that we can worship the 
the deities of <laughs> Molech and and Baphomet, Baphomet. respectively. <laughs> I gotta say, this I actually you like think this. It's cool? Yeah, this looks yeah, pretty I cool. Yeah, I kind of want to do it to myself now. It's really heavy on my eyes, this honestly. Is like my first time doing corpse paint, I think it actually turned out pretty. This cool. Looks pretty badass. <laughs> I, I like it actually, especially like the lips. Like I would just like wear this normally. You know, <laughs> this is atheist final form. That's what this is. This is what it all inevitably leads to. <laughs> All right, guys, let me know what you guys thought about this video. If you guys have any more fun ideas of things we could do on this channel, please let us know other things that I can put Drew through. <laughs> Wait, I want to try this. We always like it when uh, vocalists do this. I want to see if I can. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to go like this. Oh, wait, uh, I have I have one. I can do this now that the makeup's done. Oh wow! <laughs> that's what uh, that's what like Karak Angren did a bunch on the oh stage. Oh my gosh, that was so cool! Uh, now it's all over my computer. That's, that was a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> what about? Do you have that clip of Karak Angren being like, "Fuck your god"? <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons who help make these videos possible. Oh, and we didn't want to film the process of the corpse paint being applied for the video that went public. We wanted to do the little joke. Yeah. But uh, you can <laughs> sign up for <laughs> Taylor's Patreon and you can get a uh, little bonus content of us hanging out and talking while she's putting the course paint <laughs> on. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. If you'd like to follow me on social media, my Instagram is Taylor underscore the underscore antibot. And if you'd like to consider supporting this channel financially so that we can buy more makeup to put on through, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then my Patreon will be linked down in the description and we'll see you on the next one. Say bye. <laughs> hey, you're